as you are aware of that we are starting with our periodic test so today we will have a revision of chapter 1 nutrition in plants so children here we will start with the topic and have a quick look out on all the questions that can be there for your exam so the first topic that comes up is nutrition so children what is nutrition as you all know nutrition is something else is the process by which organisms obtain their nutrients which are utilized by the body for the growth repair and other processes which are necessary to maintain the life and this is what is called as nutrition now there are some components which are necessary for this nutrition so this components in our body which helps uh, to grow work remain healthy and repair the worn out parts so among these nutrients as you know these are carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins minerals and some uh, and water and some other components which are required by our body then as you know when we talk of nutrition there are two modes of nutrition one is autotrophic mode of nutrition and the other one is your heterotrophic mode of nutrition so when we talk of autotrophs either the organisms which can prepare their own food are said to be autotrophs so autotrophs are the organisms that make their own food by using simple substances from their surroundings and here comes some bacteria unicellular algae and many plants which are considered to be autotrophs the other group comes up is your heterotrophs here comes all the kinds of the animals fungi and most microorganisms which are non green and some non green plants which cannot make their own food because they depend on the plants directly or indirectly for their food so some obtains their nutrients by feeding on the other organisms and some of the organisms they obtain their nutrition directly from the plants so these are categorized as your heterotrophs so yeah children we just now discussed what is uh, nutrition what is nutrient what are the two modes of nutrition so on the basis of that we will be uh, here we will just go for the answers so here there is there are two questions on the screen these are your multiple choice questions so you will just choose out the right answer so you i hope you all are ready with your pencil and your uh, paper so we'll just go through human beings can be categorized as heterotrophs autotrophs parasites or saprotrophs yes i feel all of you know the answer so please note it down yes human beings are heterotrophs because they cannot prepare their own food so which of the following is a nutrient proteins vitamins carbohydrates and all of these yes children so i hope just now we revised yes all the three all these three which are given over here on the screen are considered to be your nutrients so the option will be fourth one that is d1 all of these so i hope the children this is clear to you so this is how the questions can be framed up and it can be asked in your exam also so today as you know we are just preparing oneself for the periodic test so here i will be continuing with the questions also in between the lecture so that you are familiar with what type of questions can be framed up either what kind of questions can be asked during the exam yes now the next term that comes up is your photosynthesis so as you know all the plants which are green in color they can prepare their own food so plants they synthesize their food by the process of photosynthesis and for this they require they require carbon dioxide they require water okay and all this process goes on in the presence of sunlight and when we talk of this photosynthesis it takes place basically in the green part of the plant so why in the green part because there the chlorophyll is present so where is this 
now one more question if i just go through is what is stomata these are the tiny pores which are present on the surface of the leaf so here you can see the equation which is given on the screen that is 6 Uh, CO2 plus 6 H2O in the presence of sunlight gives out glucose C6 H12O6 plus which gas is revolved that is your carbon dioxide so this is the equation here you can see on the on the reactant side we have carbon dioxide and water and on the product side we have glucose and oxygen so glucose and oxygen is the product okay that means that is released when they undergo the process of photosynthesis so here you can see how the plants they undergo the process of photosynthesis how they just take in the carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight and water and they in the in the part which are said to be the green colored part that is your chlorophyll where the chlorophyll is present there the process of photosynthesis is taking place and how they form the sugar and release out the oxygen now there is one more question how do the colored leaves undergo the process of photosynthesis because as we know most of the plants uh, have got leaf which are not green in color they are basically red yellow or maybe some other color <coughs> so how do they prepare the food do they undergo the process of photosynthesis yes these colored leaves also undergo the process of photosynthesis how do they go is the sun is the ultimate as you know the sun is the ultimate source of the light so these leaves also have chlorophyll so these chlorophyll in such leaves is masked in the other colored pigments it is not there is it is present within in one place it is there there within the chlorophyll only but it is present in those pigments which are present within the leaf also so there is again a questions for you the all that we have just not discussed on the basis of that we there are few questions for you first one ultimate source of energy yes you know what is the ultimate source of energy second one where is the food factory of the plant third one tiny pores on the surface of the leaf fourth one green pigments which are present in the leaf fifth one the process of food making in the plant sixth one raw materials for the photosynthesis and the seventh one end products of the photosynthesis i hope you all know the answers but we will discuss with the answers once again so that you will be clear with the answers also so ultimate source of energy is yes sun second one food factory of the plant leaf tiny pores stomata green pigment present in the leaf chlorophyll process of food making in the plant is called the photosynthesis raw material for the photosynthesis that is your carbon dioxide and water and products of the photosynthesis is your glucose and and oxygen yes right children i hope you have understood till here and the topic is very clear till the topic photosynthesis and here you can see the colored leaves on the screen and just now we discuss it is the pigment which is present in the leaves okay apart from the green colored chlorophyll with the help of which they can undergo the process of photosynthesis okay now children next question that comes up is your algae either the topic that comes up is your algae what is this algae algae is your slimy green patches on the ponds or some or other stagnant water bodies you might have seen whenever you might have visited a pond either a river okay so wherever the water is stagnant where it doesn't moves okay there you can see the green patches which are there and what is your algae since these children you know these children uh, algae they can undergo the process of photosynthesis since they are green in color so they have got the pigment called chlorophyll and so they can undergo the process of photosynthesis now two terms will be introduced to you one is your parasite and the other one is the host so for this one i will take an example as cascuta i hope you might have seen big big trees on those big trees you might have seen the yellow yellow color string like okay that is there on the on these trees this is what is your cascuta okay so what is a parasite the parasites 
which derives okay which deprives the host valuable nutrients that means they are gaining the nutrients from the host okay on which now what is an host the plant on which these parasites they depend on for their food and shelter so two terms i hope you might have understood one is parasite and the other one is the host host means on which the parasites they survive they live they depend for their food and shelter whereas the parasites parasites are the organisms parasites are the plants which deprive their nutrients from these host then comes your insectivorous plants yes children there are few plants which feed on these insects they trap these insects and they digest them among them some uh, the most common one is that of your pitcher plant but you know children these plants are green in color still they and they undergo the process of photosynthesis but they and still depend on these insects why because they require to fulfill their requirements of the nitrogen compounds for it growth and development so they are depending on these insects so for this if you remember one of the example is that of your pitcher plant okay here you can see on the screen the plant which is looking like a pitcher this pitcher is formed it is a modified leaf okay it is the leaf of that plant the more the leaf it uh, modifies in the shape of a pitcher and with the help of the leaf which forming a lid to prevent the rain water from entering into the pitcher you can see a lid at the top of it okay and it prevents but when an insect sits on the rim or the mouth of the pitcher you can see a mouth okay here what happens to it the hairs in the which are present within the pitcher directs the insects down into the pitcher where the enzymes are present and these enzymes they digest the juice of the pitcher uh, of the pitcher and digest the insects and this is how they engulf the insects and just take in the nitrogen nitrogen compounds from them and fulfill their requirements so again here we have a question session so again the topic is your name the following here you have to name one one examples for each one is parasite the second one is symbiotic organism third one is your host fourth one is your saprotrophs and the fifth one is your insectivorous plant so here children i know i feel all of you know the examples of all these okay and so uh, there is no need is there any need to discuss the answers okay if you want yes we will be going for it okay so here uh, and um, uh, yes as we know uh, one parasite yes it is your cuscuta one host any of the plant on which these uh, cuscuta they grow okay then comes your saprotroph okay here saprotroph means your fungi okay and then the insectivorous plants and insectivorous plants are your are your which are plant sundew plant okay so these are some of your insectivorous plants now the term comes up is your saprotrophic nutrition now what is saprotrophic nutrition there are some organisms such as your fungi your bacteria which feeds on the dead and decaying organic matter okay it can be a plant it can be an animal such organisms are said to be your saprophytes okay and the mode of nutrition is said to be your saprotrophic even your mushrooms your bread molds your yeast they are also considered to be your saprotrophic they also undergo the saprotrophic nutrition and they are said to be your saprophytes now the next question that comes up either the next topic that comes up is your symbiotic relationship what is symbiotic relationship symbiotic relationship is the relationship between the two organisms here one organism cannot survive if the other organism is not present okay so such organisms which survive together for their mutual benefit among that the most common one is your lichens yes children if you remember your uh, litmus paper which you have studied in your acid and base chapter your litmus paper is made out of your lichens okay so here there is a mutual relationship between the algae and the 
fungi. How is the relationship? What is the relationship here? Fungi provides the shelter, water and the minerals and the algae on the other hand it provides with the food okay which it prepares as you know we have just now revised again that algae are green in color so they can prepare their food they undergo the process of photosynthesis. So this is how both are mutually benefited and both are in relationship with each other. Here you can see the figure of other you can see the uh, lichens here are different types of lichens which are growing on different places okay now the next is your replenishment of the nutrients in the soil what is the need of the replenishment of the nutrients within the soil okay so for this one we will say that replenishment of the nutrients means how the soil it can enrich itself okay sometimes what happens the soil it loses its fertility so to uh, again to have that replenishment of the nutrients we are using fertilizers and manures but here there is a vast difference between a fertilizer and a manure fertilizers are chemically based okay and whereas the manure it is uh, produced produced naturally it is the excreta of the animals either the leftover of the vegetables and the other food items so here the soil it requires some replenishment okay so for this even sometimes you might have seen either you might have heard of the leguminous plants these are the plants which the farmers they use okay for um, for replenishing the nitrogenous compounds within the soil so that the plant they can give out either more yield okay so for this one they use the leguminous plants and i'm going again with this topic here are again few questions why plants are provided with fertilizer and manure second one is how leguminous plants help the farmers then what is symbiotic relationship what are saprotrophs what are lichens and why do picture plant feeds on the insect i hope all these topics are clear to you and you can answer these questions now it is again it was a short revision for you for these uh, for this chapter that is chapter number one and this is how you can just see this is how the questions will be framed in the exam also that means in your test the questions can be framed anyway and they can be asked here suppose the question is given as your saprotrophs so this question saprotroph can be asked after giving you under the choose the correct answer so here three or four options will be given along with it and they can give you one example and they can ask you to choose among that okay that is one way second one is it can be asked under what are saprotrophs then what do you mean by saprotrophic mode of nutrition so here different ways are there that can be used to frame the same topic the same question okay so different ways are there so you have to understand the topic and accordingly you will write the answer it is not necessary you have to write pages and pages either you can just write uh, write it down in one sentence okay so this thing as you know it is your online exam so you will have a very brief uh, you will write all the answers very short and suppose you are not able to write so you can just speak okay and with, you can just open your uh, speaker and with the help of that also you can write the answer either you can just speak and the computer either the mobile will write down the answers for you so in that way you can just finish off with your paper and uh, there will be a mock test also so that will also guide you and that will also help you i hope that chapter is clear to you there is there are no more any doubts with you if you have any doubts you can feel free and you can just pass the questions to your cr okay that means your class representative and we can just have a short look on those questions and we will discuss those questions once again in our sessions okay so children thank you bye bye